Ephesians chapter 1. And Brother Hagen taught us to pray this prayer every day. And so let's pray it together. Make it personal. Out loud. It doesn't matter what, what translation you have or they're going to put it up here maybe. And we'll all pray it together. Make it personal. You'll hear me say a few words different because that's, I've changed it to make it more meaningful to me. <coughs> maybe use the Greek word or whatever. So Ephesians chapter 1. We're praying now. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17. Every single morning, every single morning, I get in my prayer chair like this. I open this up. I usually read it. I could say it. But this is God talking to me. And this is a prayer God gave Paul. He's anointed. We can still pray it. I pray it every single day of my life. I, I do have a lot. Of, I'm not bragging on me. I'm just telling you it asks for a spirit of revelation. It's just amazing as I read the word how revelation comes. I believe it's a result of praying this prayer. So here we go. You're sitting in your chair. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Let the eyes of my understanding, my heart, be enlightened, that I may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his dunamis to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in the Messiah, the anointed one, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenlies far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And it put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all to the church, the ecclesia, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace we are saved. Hath raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. And so then I praise God for this. Oh, I thank him for his great plan of redemption that he planned and sent the Lord Jesus Christ to consummate. I thank him for his blood. I thank him for my covenant. And I thank him that it is written. And God told Gary Wood, tell the people to pray, it is written. It is written that when he quickened him, he quickened me. When he raised him, he raised me. When he seated him, he seated me in him at the right hand of the Father in Christ Jesus, far above all principality, power, might, dominion, every name is name. And there I sit. That's why I do this seated. I don't do it standing up. I'm seated. I have authority. And then I usually read this scripture, which is over in Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense, Adam, death reigned by one, much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Amplified says, shall reign in as kings in life. So then I say, Father, to give you glory, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to rule in my domain. And then I sit there and my prayer chair looks out over the lake on the island on the bluff. And I say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, kingdom of darkness, you listen up. It is written in Colossians that he has translated me out of your authority. And translated me into the kingdom of God's dear son. 
He has seated me at his own right hand. And I'm here to tell you what you cannot do today. I'm here to tell you that you're paralyzed in the following. You cannot touch me, spirit, soul, or body. I plead the efficacy of the blood. And here's my family you can't touch. Sometimes I name every single one of them and it takes me quite a while. And then I'll camp on one of them, you know. And sometimes I just say my four children and those they're married to. My ten grandchildren and those they're married to. My, I'm having to count because I think we got four. Is that right? Great grandchildren. And we're getting two more. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And then I say, you cannot touch the good words. I'm ordained to walk in. You don't touch McDonald Bell. You don't touch Israel. You don't act up there. You don't act up in Branson, Missouri. You're not bringing any of your plots here in Branson, Missouri. In the greater Branson area. We plead the blood of Jesus. I draw the bloodline. I draw the bloodline over Collinsville and Bartlesville, Oklahoma. You're not going to act up in those heavenlies. Hallelujah. I, I wouldn't begin a day without doing that. And if I had a child out there, I'd say, I'd, I'd camp on them. i put the blood of Jesus over Joshua. Let's say, you don't touch him today. The blood covers him. I have the authority. God, the judge of all, has given it to me. And you're not touching Joshua. I plead the blood of Jesus over him.